When most people think of archaeology, Egypt is the country that most often comes to mind. While there are archaeological sites all over the world, Egypt is clearly the most famous. It is most known for pyramids and mummies, but it has much more than these. One reason e Egypt is such an archaeological gold mine is its dry climate being mostly desert, which helps preserve artifacts. Egyptian archaeology is not without its issues, including the fact that Egyptian pharaohs had a tendency to exaggerate their accomplishments and downplay or remove references to their failures. They also had a tendency to engage in history revisionism by rewriting the history of other pharaohs even to the point of removing them from history. Despite these issues, Egyptian archaeology remains an interesting topic. Egypt is located in the upper eastward corner of Africa. Since the land of Egypt is mostly desert, its most important feature is the Nile River. Since ancient times, the Nile River has served for drinking water, irrigation, and transportation. In fact, the Nile River in many ways is Egypt, since without it, Egypt would be a total wasteland. Egypt also has the Sahara Desert to the west and the Red Sea to the east. The Nile flows between the two, producing a fertile corridor on both sides of the river. This fertile corridor and the Nile River Delta make up the majority of fertile land in Egypt. The climate of Egypt is, to put it simply, hot and dry. It is mostly desert with summer temperatures averaging around 112 degrees Fahrenheit or 44 degrees Celsius, but getting as hot as 114 degrees Fahrenheit or 46 degrees Celsius with almost no rain. In the Nile River Delta, it averages a cooler 90 degrees Fahrenheit, 32 degrees Celsius, with an annual rainfall of 200 millimeters, 8 inches, to 20 millimeters, 0.8 inches. This is why the Nile River has always been Egypt's lifeblood, and important to the point of being worshipped. It needs to be noted that during the Ice Age, Egypt received a lot of rain. The standard Egyptian chronology consists of 30 dynasties from about 3100 to 400 BC. This Egyptian chronology is based mainly on a list of pharaohs compiled by the 3rd century priest Manetho. This list of pharaohs includes the lengths of their reigns. A key assumption of the standard Egyptian chronology is that these pharaohs reigned sequentially, but some seem to have reigned at the same time in different areas of Egypt, such as north and south. Not only was Manetho's pharaoh's list not intended as a chronological account of Egyptian history, but it does not agree with other 3rd century Egyptian sources. Since the standard Egyptian chronology is used to date sites around the Mediterranean, it has resulted in an unexplained Dark Ages. This and other problems have prompted efforts to revise the Egyptian chronology. This chart shows the standard Egyptian chronology and revised Egyptian chronologies and how they compare to the biblical chronology. In this shift of the revised Egyptian chronology, biblical events are not only shifted into different dynasties, but different periods as well. When you consider the fact that Egyptian pharaohs have sometimes engaged in history revisionism, exaggerating their own accomplishments, meanwhile, on the other hand, the Bible is incredibly honest, showing the flaws of even the most godly of men, it becomes clear that the biblical chronology is more likely to be accurate than the standard Egyptian chronology. When this revised Egyptian chronology is coupled with a short ice age following the Genesis Flood, it explains water-carved features associated with the Great Sphinx of Egypt, placing the pharaoh that built it at the end of this short ice age. Pharaoh was the title of the kings of Egypt. They were powerful rulers, often worshipped as gods. Most of what we know of them are from the temples, tombs, and other monuments they left behind. Some of the temples and monuments also had king's lists. The most important of these lists was by the 3rd century BC priest Manetho. The fact that pharaohs were the original graffiti artists has been helpful. The tendency to cover almost every wall on temples, tombs, and other monuments with pictures and writings about their favorite topic themselves is also useful, though caution is needed since they were not always honest in their reporting of events and often revised historical records to make themselves look better or earlier pharaohs look bad or even to remove them from history. The fact that they also believed in taking it with them caused them to load their tombs with many artifacts that ended up being quite well preserved. It is because of the pharaohs as well as the dry climate that we have so much archaeological material to work with. When most people think of Egyptian archaeology, the first thing that comes to mind are the pyramids, and particularly the biggest of them all, the Great Pyramid of Giza. They are mainly thought to be the tombs of pharaohs. However, there are those who have questioned 
the standard view because they tend to lack hieroglyphic inscriptions typical of Egyptian tombs, and no mummies or the usual assortment of stuff have ever been found in one. It is, however, generally thought that grave robbers were the reason for the lack of mummies and other items usually buried with later pharaohs. This makes sense given the fact that pyramids are rather obvious structures that are all but engraved invitations to tomb robbers. The lack of these items, however, has left room for speculation. Some seem reasonable, like storing grain, while others come across as loony, like contacting aliens. One of the biggest mysteries of the Egyptian pyramids is how they were built. These structures consist of thousands of stones fitted tightly together and usually with highly accurate astronomical alignments. While the term mummy can refer to any well-preserved corpse, they are often associated with ancient Egypt. Mummification was common in ancient Egypt because preservation of a person's dead body was important to their view of the afterlife. Egyptian mummification involved removing the internal organs, including the brain, but excluding the heart, which was thought to be the center of reason. Egyptian mummies have provided a large amount of information about the people of ancient Egypt that cannot be found in written records. Some royal mummies have had enough DNA to discover that royal family relationships were not always what was found in official records. Ancient Egyptians left plenty of artifacts. This is partly a result of the fact that as part of their religion, they believed in taking it with them. As a result, they tended to load their tombs with stuff to make them as comfortable as possible in the afterlife. This is particularly true of royalty and other nobles. The fact that all this stuff was for the person's afterlife resulted in the items found in tombs, including a lot of everyday items. One of the unintended consequences of such practices is that Egyptian tombs tend to be time capsules of ancient artifacts when they were not looted by tomb robber studies. Because ancient Egyptians left so much behind, Egypt is an archaeological gold mine. The fact that they often buried their dead with stuff needed for their idea of the afterlife is the main reason for it. This fact, coupled with a dry climate, makes Egypt ideal for archaeology. However, while the ancient Egyptians left many artifacts and ruins, they were not always honest historians. Sadly, the pharaohs had a tendency to downplay their failures and exaggerate their accomplishments. There were even attempts to remove other pharaohs from history. This means that one needs to be careful about how accurate accounts are when compared with other sources. Despite these problems, Egyptian archaeology does yield lots of results. Ancient Egypt was the perfect combination of climate and culture to preserve lots of artifacts, ruins, and even human remains.